get it free. Here's Kizza in the box. Now a shot by Ibarra, hits the pump, and Dikwa knocks it in. And it's 1-0 Pittsburgh. That's shambolic defending by Hartford again. There's an inquest going on with Niall Logue, with Matt Sheldon, with Connor McGlynn. It's of abilities is nowhere near his man, and that creates space for Pittsburgh. And yes, it's sloppy, but third time lucky for Albert Dequa, and just like he did 11 days ago, he opens the scoring off the post. No problem, no handball. And again, he's allowed to touch it three times, and Matt Sheldon still doesn't get there. Then the hands up in vain. The USL match for Pittsburgh, of course, they've had great success in the U.S. Open Cup. McGlynn misses. Numbers for Pittsburgh in the box. They send it for Dequa, hits the pipe, and then puts in the rebound. And just like that, it's 2-0 Pittsburgh. And it's a brace in the first 18 minutes. From the English Premier League, this is a carbon copy of that game. It's one-way traffic. It's pretty much score at will. Where's the marking? Joe Rice can't do anything about it. They're not close enough to get the cross in. The jump to try and stop Dequa is nowhere near from Matt Sheldon. And Plays it square on the right to Blackstock. Chips it towards Header Ibarra. Scores! Beautifully set up. Mark Ibarra. His first goal of the season. And it's a 3-0 Pittsburgh lead. And that was a thing of beauty by the number one team in the Eastern Conference. Realizing you can get space in wide areas. The first two goals came from the left-hand side. The third goal comes from the right. Everybody's ball watching in a green jersey. This is a perfect example. So Niall Logue 50 and Connor McGlynn 28. If he doesn't get the ball, Ibarra, Dequa's scoring. What is happening there from a Hartford defensive perspective? Played back to Lewis. Sends it on the left. Torres towards the box. Goal! So Hartford, in the 78th minute, gets on the board off a set piece. Great backhanded header by Matt Sheldon for his first goal of the year. Weight came off the line. I think it, it's very difficult now to, to know what team to, to pick on Saturday. One player, which starts this player, Opino. Good ass hustle by Antoine. Played through. Here's a shot. And a goal! <laughs> That's Danny Barrera. And suddenly, we have a game. Great hustle by Opino. Well, well, well. This one was already in the history books, in the record books. Pittsburgh taking three points back to Pennsylvania. Hold the horse. Danny Barrera. Rice way out of the goal to try to talk to his mate. Sent towards Amo in the box. Weight goes down. He's out of the goal. Opino puts it back, shoots it, and he scores! And we are tied at three! <laughs> Antoine Opino! What a chaotic goal. They're asking for a foul on the goalkeeper. No chance. He came. He didn't conquer. They're asking for a foul on Joe Farrell. Opener went in hard, didn't get it. He kept going. Junior Etu plays the ball back. Sent towards the 18. Chested down. Here's Obregon. Wow, what a goal. And he scores. The ex Hartford Athletic, J.C. Obregon. Hartford season. And it's a super finish. But I was talking earlier about the Charleston game. The last time I saw Hartford score a goal at home in a game that I was at, it finished 4-3, and it had to be Obregon, didn't it? They got themselves back into it. Cave Rad, too close, too tight, perhaps. Again, he still made it difficult. Marcus Epps, who seems to have a bit of a free role. He's been playing on the left, but crops up there in the middle now. Here's Milo Yosef, danger here for Birmingham Legion. Needs a good ball back. Here's Goodrup with the goal! Goodrup with the goal! When you feed Philip Goodrum, that's what he will do. Goodrum scores. 14 minutes gone. FC Tulsa 1.
Birmingham Legion FC, nil. Tolson needed early on in this match. Great build-up play. Epps finds Ferry. Ferry sees the overlapping run from Yosef. And we know that Yosef can have excellent delivery. Throughout the season, he's been able to do it. And Philip Goodrum knows where to be. You see him initially run inside the box, but pull his run back. Let those defenders go inside and allow himself a bit of space to receive the ball and then pass Van Nokel. Excellent finish, low and away with pace. It's exactly what you want to want to see from him. His ninth goal on the season in and out. Places the ball very carefully. And we'll come up and hit this one right footed. Brett against Nelson and he scores just inside the right hand post. And with just about 19 minutes on the clock, it is FC Tulsa 1, Birmingham Legion 1. To convert, we'll get another look at it here. Steps up with power, just tucked in that right hand post. Nelson goes the other way. Yeah, very well taken penalty there. Nwegbo now running at Eric Bird. Nwegbo with a chance, shoots! And it's over the top with the deflection from Rossi Tete. And all of a sudden, FC Tulsa under pressure. The ball's still in. Enzo Martinez, low ball into the box, and there's a goal! It is two in a minute. Wonderful ball in from Enzo Martinez and Nico Brett. What a great goal scorer he is. Two in a minute for him. It's FC Tulsa 1, Birmingham Legion FC 2. As the initial block for Rashid Tete, and then Birmingham Legion FC keeping it alive with pace in the box. His run here, the Nigerian 21-year-old. Hadji's trying to get back at him. Nwegbo now with a little bit of space to run here at Rashid Tete. Threads the ball into the box. Nico Brett, hat-trick. We've just talked about his prowess. Wonderful assist. And Nico Brett gets a hat-trick. And just like that, it's FC Tulsa 1. Birmingham Legion FC 3. I wouldn't say direct, but it is down the middle of the field. And it's just too easy for Oakland Roots to just stay compact. So they've managed to stop any kind of chances, really, and just keep New Mexico United at arms then. Through ball here for Barbier. Cross goes in, and Oakland have opened the scoring here 42 minutes in. It was Pelaez tapping that one home. And the look here on this TLC replay. Barbier coming up from the back line. And Pelaez is just able to get in front of Kalen Ryden. It's the ball into Barbier. Again, I, I can't see who played it there in, in real time. I didn't catch it. And it just that's what made the goal. It just set Barbier on his bike. Six goals conceded on the season for Tambakis. As Oakland now have numbers. Here's Reed. And Reed is able to tuck it away in the back corner. And Oakland now takes a 2-0 lead as New Mexico furious with the official. Oakland Roots here in the 53rd minute. There goes that man again, getting forward, making things happen. Daniel Barbier. He's going to have a, another assist tonight. A great night. You know, that's the left center back, and that's that's the difference, right, between the two teams. I mentioned in the first half about Ryden and Seymour being more involved in the attack because they're either side of Polona, but they really haven't done that. They really haven't stepped into that space in front of them. And there's another wasteful pass there. It's a good thing, you know. It, the best thing. Players just want to get back on the pitch and try and make it right as quick as possible. Bank of America corner kick. Bouncing around in the 18, and New Mexico has pulled one back here. A lifeline extended to the black and yellow. Not quite sure who it was down there in the fracas. That's a lost in translation. Here's a chance to look to see who got the final touch. He's just bobbling around. He's probably a foul for a PK there as well. Sergio Rivas, right man in the right. 20, Chapa Herrera wearing the captain's armband tonight, the El Paso native. Here's a ball into the box and a header and a goal. That's Aaron on, Gomez. That's on Tristan Hodge. I don't know what he's thinking, but he just decides not to make a play on the ball. And they're appealing for offside in vain. Well, there's the deflection, and Hodge just stops. I don't know what he is doing. If he, if he decides to even make a play on the ball, he heads up behind for a corner. He just stops. Joe Ride, Rice can say offside all he likes. You play to the whistle. Leo, Leon... El Paso leading 1-0 on the goal by Gomez in the 15th minute, looking to expand. 
Hartford sets up a six-man wall. They drill it through to goal. Beautifully hit by Petar Petrovic. His fifth goal of the year. And in the 70th minute, El Paso expands their lead to 2-0. Give us a better look. Yeah, I don't know what Joe Rice is up to there. Yes, you've got to kind of cover the left-hand side in case he goes that way, but you cannot be beaten on the side that's opposite to the side that the wall's protecting. That's your side. The nil-nil draw against Memphis on Wednesday night, but that was a draw that felt like a win, given the fact Indy played a man down for 50 minutes. Dees pay could not get there. Williamson now will have a look. Left foot slides it by, and DC, or excuse me, Lon United in less than 45 seconds get the game's first goal. Wow. Unfortunate hop, just gets caught up under Diz. Goals are plenty in this contest. Yeah, I just got done saying how critical it was for Loudon. This is equally critical for the 11 to stay in that position where they got a cushion before that final playoff spot. Last year, Williamson played in MLS Next Pro, scored nine times for... Jackman has to deal with the league's all-time penalty taker and maker in front of him, the BYB behind him. Aiden Quinn knocks it home. Aiden Quinn, you're the next contestant on scoring a goal for the Indy 11. Come on down. It's 1-1. Time to cue the smoke in Indianapolis. Now, Evan from the spot. Two from on a play. And again, he ties Ioze as the all-time penalty maker for the Indy 11. Io played here for five seasons. Aiden's been here for five months, and he's made seven... Quinn, Asante, Gwenzotti to his right. Gwenzotti gets to it, has a hand, oh, puts it in, catches it off the post, and he's in front two to one. Sebastian Gwenzotti, tougher than a $2 stake, 2-1 Indy. Well, now the scoreline matches what it was back on May the 6th. Now it is all three points for the Indy 11. The most sweet of kisses off of that near side post for Sebastian Guenzotti, his 67th goal in USL championship play. We saw it in several different ranks of competition. This one sprung loose and Tampa immediately out. Jennings had a beat on it. Now the reinforcements come, but James the left foot. Great stop by Zendayas. Can he get the second one? No. Cal Jennings, after the hydration break, had a step, did not give up on the play. What a response that's coming out of the hydration break. And talk about the balance on the front line, whether it is J.J. Williams coming to feet. Cal Jennings gives you the ability just to stretch and cr to create something out of nothing. The way that he gets his hips around this ball to keep it on target. Now that ball didn't cross the line. J.J. Williams is there clean it up, but on first instance, I thought that goal would, should go. To on Agents and Diaz, who has failed to stop a PK this season on three bids. Dennis on the approach, pulls it, he scores! Right down the pipe, Charlie Dennis point to the hometown faithful that have made the trek from Tampa Bay. Just takes a little bit off of it. Let's send Diaz guess the wrong way, and go essentially the audacity and the confidence. Cool as you would like, off to the corner, celebrate. Two goals for Tampa Bay Rowdy. To Tennessee in the first matchup. Now the Charleston Battery wants some revenge, but of course, she mentioned as well, these are two very strong attacking sides. There's gonna be a lot of chances. Avila's in for a chance here, and he scores! It's an absolutely magnificent goal from Beto Avila. And the Battery strike first inside of 17 minutes one situation against Turchi notices that he's not very good defensively in that spot watches Avila his initial first touch is inside and the fact that he beats his defender takes the ball back inside cuts off Turchi's ability to continue to try and slow down Avila Avila with a really good technical ability to get past his defender and slot it home near well past the minimum of four at this point Barbier Diaz, the cross comes in, Rodriguez scores! 
and Oakland is the team that will take the lead at halftime. The disallowed goal and the Roots now lead. What a turn of events. Good long ball, great touch here. Sets it up, Diaz with the whip in over the defender. Both Rodriguez finding the most important spot in the box in between defenders, find space. And that's all he's done and he's headed it down. What a goal. Powell's now taking off the ball, Clementa. Some pressure from Louisville City. Off the mark and it's Wilson Harris. Harris picking out OB. He scores! Ryan Ownby off the bench and onto the score sheet. And Lou City is finally back level. Hit behind the goalie. Great pressure from Ownby right there to create the turnover. Harris picks up his head. Ownby, not sure if he wants to finish first time, second time. Touch comes up. Great header. And it's 1 1. Great 20 minutes left in this game. Great ball by Harris right there. Brave header too. You never know how long is left. You send the goalie forward, they yeah. will not. It's Ownby, back for Jimenez. Back for Ownby. Sends it in. Howells tries to head it down. It's Gibson, served out wide. Fired in! Low City win it! A walk-off goal! And all Great goal, great technique. Very tough finish to come across your body. Let the ball wait for it patiently. Good ball by Gibson to put it back into the box. And just look at this. This evening. And there is C. Bodily sends this one inside. And then a, a ball passed up, up in the middle, and a shot and a score, and it's a goal by San Diego Loyal. And how about that? That was Ronaldo Damas. Who had the ball come down, settle at his feet, and quickly snapshotted it to the left side of the net, and it's 1-0 San Diego. A look at the replay here. That one is bounced up into a spot. You do see Pimentel take a spill there. As uh, Vegas here, again, well outside of his net, sends this one, helps start the attack. There's Guido there. Guido out to Bodily on the left wing, and he'll send it inside. It's redirected, and it's another goal. It's 2-0 San Diego, and they have had lightning strike twice here in the mid part of the first half. This time, it's Moshoban. Just picked up his sixth assist a moment ago. It was Bodily with the assist here. That was lightning quick. You see, that's in the back of the net before Tyler Derrick even sees it coming. Goes inside. They're able to get turned a little bit. The Toros work it over to Ruiz. Ruiz has a man to his left. That's Benitez. Sends it inside, and it's uh, poked away from Frank Lopez. Then a shot from distance. And how about that? And the Toros are right back in it. It's game on here at HEB Park as the Toros from the top of the 18 slam one into the back of the San Diego net and have their first goal. There. Here's another look at the goal. Nice long strike from Jonathan Ricketts. And the Toros throughout the year have had some real success from being able to take. There's Pinzon making his approach. A shot and a goal. And the Toros have tied it up here in minute 73 at HEB Park. Down 2-0, they've now come all the way back and tied the match. What a change of fortunes for Rio Grande Valley. Down 2-0 at the half. It looked like San Diego Loyal had all the momentum. They were getting tour opportunities, and Pinzon just completely fools Vegas. Rio Grande Valley, 2-2. 2-2 if... our score. And here's uh, Pettis sends this one through, trying to get it to Moshaban. Nadarse clears it. Headed forward by Colin Martin. Out to the uh, foot of Pettis once more. A little give and go. This goes to Moshe Bond. This is onside, and it's a goal. Boyle back in front, 3-2, to two, and just moments after giving up the equalizer, 
They are back in front, and Moshe Bon has his second strike tonight. 3-2. A nice little pass. Uh, it was Pettis initially. I want to say Collier, but I'm not certain about the assist there to Moshe Bon, who pushed that ball forward right to him. It's feast or famine, it seems like, with Bexley United. You never have a home game for months, then all of a sudden four come along. It's like London buses. Four come along at once. But, you know, you can see is a... You know what he sees? A little bit of urgency early on here. And Harry Swartz has opened up the scoring just 90 seconds in here. And New Mexico has erupted. A big time goal for the Boston boy, Harry Swartz. Oh, uh, Zico Bailey, I think it was, like I say, Santi Moore rolls the ball to Bailey. And then that finish there under a lot of pressure. And, you know, it's what a great finish. And I tell you what, that could be the medicine where... The, the things that New Mexico fans will be hoping now is go get a second. Let's get on a little bit of a roll here if you're a New Mexico United fan. Early start, Tulsa a little bit rattled. You can... Portillo. New Orleans native has that one blocked out. Moore. Bailey lets this one run. Reyes now comes to Rivas, and Sergio Rivas has scored his second goal in as many games this week. His sixth on the campaign. And the Albuquerque native is feeling it. For over 30 years, these two just started playing together, but the trust is there. What a ball in from Reyes. What a finish from Rivas. 2-0, New Mexico lead before the break. I say that, and you can see Sergio Rivas, he barely has to move. He takes like three steps and just plants his feet and gets so much power. Ruggi finds Segrist. Looking for Epps now. Seymour closing down. Epps able to wiggle free. Marcus Epps whips it into the corner. And Tulsa have pulled one back here. 78 minutes in. I gave a little sight uh, a few moments ago, maybe about five minutes ago, where he got isolated against Will Seymour. Left his foot. You knew that was going in the top corner. What a strike that was. And Sandback is dove, but he really could do nothing about it. Seventh goal of the season for Marcus Epps. Second leading scorer for FC Tulsa. And it is game on here. Tough decision there for Corgan. He goes yellow. Free kick here. Oh, what a goal! Colorado Springs down two men have the lead. It's Jay Chapman with the kiss off the crossbar. Colorado Springs switchbacks FC are in front in Seaside. The crossbar watches Chapman, an in swinger over top of the bar. Nothing Herrera could do as he steps off his line a little too far. Watches Herrera, he makes that jump a little too late. Times it really well, rather gets into the right position, just doesn't time it well. And a potential equalizer from the substitute Christian Valeski. And he sends the goalkeeper, Kosminski, the wrong way. There's life inside Cardinale Stadium. Eight on the season for Valeski. And we're tied to one entering the 90th minutes. Using his instep, make sure he puts it in the right spot where he wants to go, but also using that power. A slight hesitation from Valeski and notices that Kosminski goes to his right. What a wild second half from Seaside. That is an understatement. Here's Valeski. He goes the opposite way and he has his second goal and he's given Monterey Bay a second half lead. So much energy and watches Kuzminski again with his instep. Kuzminski goes the same way, expecting Valeski to go to the right. And so much power, Valeski with so much confidence as well. You can see he's had multiple opportunities throughout his career to put those home. And put Monterey Bay up by one. Well done defensively there by Matrano. Into the middle for Ingram. Chance to break for the lights. Danny Rios on it. It's Danny Rios in the box. Rios shoots, scores! At the death of the first half, it's Danny Rios and the lights take the lead. And here Bagley does so well. He holds it up, uses his strength, 
plays it in poor defending in the end from the rising but Rios does everything you want to do the goalkeeper a little bit unlucky but what a comfortable finish from Danny Rios does so well he opens up the angle slows the goalkeeper down and just slides it down the inside of him that's yeah, good though from Danny Trehill, wasn't it? This time going down onto the, the left-hand side, he just whipped it across. It took a deflection, so it could have gone anywhere. And luckily for the lights, it went away from danger. Trejo overhead oh kick my. into the back of the net. What a goal! And I believe it was Artiaga who got it. He's played into his feet, is from King into the box, it's one touch from Artiega. And he's just overhead kick, the old scissor kick, and he's just looped and there's nothing the goalkeeper keeper could do about it. And it's one of those goals you see. Otang with it, left side, into the middle for Ingram. Ingram, long shot, knocked down, follow-up shot, fired on, into the back of the net! And what a response from the lights. And once again, it's Danny Rios. Here's Oten coming in. It got to Ingram. He had one thing in his mind, touch and hit. He's hit it decent. It's come off the defender and it's fell to Rios. And the lights leading 2-1. Torres crosses into the box. And it's a goal for Phoenix Rising, and they have equalized again here tonight. Here is the, the link up is Torres, Trejo, nice little touch down to the back of the line, cut back, and just a simple tap in for Trejo, but really good. That's the, as decisive the Rising have been tonight, but this is. Torres has been a big difference since he came on and a really good assist and a nice finish from Trejo. Yeah, that, that, was a, that was a fantastic goal. For me, it all comes from Torres, though, getting down, beating his man. And now now Phoenix in the ascendancy. You would think they would they have to be favourites to go on and win this game. Quickly, Phoenix, another ball into the box. Shot oh. fired! Another goal for Phoenix! And just like that, they are in front. Well, we've been talking about the character of this Phoenix team, and now we see it. But what a nice little cutback from Manjano, and what a hit from Amenakos. We've seen that he's got um, a good delivery from corners, and he's coming in at the perfect place, and he's finished that with a plum. He's also tried to play it forward to Keko. But you're right, not a lot of room. As Among is back into this game and now is in a foot race with Connor Donovan. This is a big mistake here. Opportunity for Among. He puts it in the net. And Orange County has scored. Oh, Thomas Among steps right back on the pitch. The ball takes an awkward bounce. And the Republic find themselves down the goal. On this game, and the initial ball played over the top. Not dealt with well enough by Connor Donovan. Just misjudges that touch. And it's a really well taken finish right into the bottom corner of Danny Vitiello's goal. Nothing he can do about that. And now you're going to see uh, maybe a little bit of change in attitude from this Republic side who've been playing a little bit cagey. Now they have to go score. 19th goal allowed on the season for Sacramento. Still a league best. But Orange County is able to find the net. And now how does this Republic team answer on a night? Gecko has it taken away. Now powers the center back moving into the attack plane at forward for McNulty. McNulty gets through. Over pass. Vidiello Vito got a hand on it. McNulty will turn around. Plays it to Kasipli. Kasipli makes it two to nothing. Orange County. Blue Rock and he gets himself maybe an assist here. I know, doesn't it? It starts to play. McNulty's unable to finish it, but holds it up well enough. And Seth Kasipli, back in his hometown, provides the dagger. So two nothing Orange County trying to ruin what is supposed to be a special night in Sacramento. Penalty kick brought to you by Stone River, the third in as many games for Birmingham Legion. Nico Brett's two for two, make it three for three. Brett scores Birmingham on the board first here on this Sunday.
Tom Cool collected and hammers it into the side netting. Excellent penalty kick from Nico Brett. Good effort there from Reese Williams, but couldn't quite keep that in play. But options here for Detroit, perhaps. Williams got the cross all the way across, and it's in. Ben Morris finds the back of the net. What an instant response for Detroit. Giveaway in midfield, ball goes wide, and then it's a great ball behind the defense. Penalty kick brought to you by Stone River. Enzo Martinez slots it home. Birmingham Legion back in front, two to one. Two leading scorers on the team, both getting on the board tonight, both from the spot. Steinwasher has to feel a little frustrated. It's a big giveaway. Van Oakle off his line, can't do anything about that. Ben Morris has his second. 2-2 two, two, and a goal-filled first half here at Protective Stadium. Pretty simple chance for Morris to finish. Just has to have the power to get it there, which he clearly does. Another chance for Detroit City to push forward almost straight from the kickoff. Williams has space, hounded by Corcoran. Williams still going, still Williams along the byline and it's tapped in, an own goal off the boot of Fonwo Cavita and Detroit City have their third. Great City, can't believe their luck. Morris does well to get around Matthew Corcoran. But as he lays it back, Fonwell Cavita in the right place, but just taps it into his own net. 